So let's go ahead and start an edit from scratch here that we can create a motion graphic for. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some clips into the storyboard. And I'd like you to look how the timeline builds for you automatically as you put things into the storyboard. And this is really nice, works out really well. So you can just decide the clips that you want and drag them one by one into the storyboard and your timeline will build automatically for you. Now. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt F and this will put dissolves for everything and as I look at the screen I'm fine I don't have any exclamation points anywhere but if I should decide to start making some changes and inheriting some video clips into this uh, presentation so I'm going to hold down Alt and say you know I really want to use the bumper car clip here and as soon as I do that you can see immediately that I have a problem and the clip has the diagonal lines on it and I get an exclamation point point. and if I look up top in the storyboard I can see that I'm butted all the way up against the end right here and this is my issue so I'm gonna go ahead and hold down alt with the cursor on the right side of the clip and I'm gonna left click and drag and pull back to the left and I'm going to get that out point to be back within the range of the clip and you'll see that my problem clears itself right up so whenever you're working with the storyboard and you get an exclamation point somewhere you can go back and reset an in or an out point depending upon which one is butted up against the side and uh, fix the problem now once we've got our edit going here that looks pretty good let's make our motion graphic happen right here on the first clip right as we come into the beginning of the project so again I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a fade in and I'm gonna fade the audio in as well at the beginning of the project and now we're gonna build our motion graphic right here underneath on the timeline so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a motion graphic of the earth um, it has let's blow this up a little bit it has uh, audio attached to it but it's blank I'm just gonna select it hit delete now overlay is not turned on so right now all we see is the motion graphic with no transparency let's hit the Y key this will turn on our uh, transparency or alpha channel and now we can scrub through the project and we can see the earth now this is a uh, seamless graphic so if I hit G and expand it to its full length then I hit control and left click and drag out a clone I get a seamless loop and I can go ahead and I can repeat this process and have this earth looping for as long as I want it to we'll just butt those up against each other bring them down into their own layer so now we can see the earth rotating on our project and it's the beginning of our motion graphic it's looking pretty good now let's go ahead and add another layer and for this layer we're going to go find that animated background that we used before and I'm going to drag this layer down one more and bring in this animated background go ahead and trim it up and get rid of the audio and let's go ahead and bring this down so this is our graphic that we're working with here great now <clears throat> again it's a full screen graphic and overlay is not turned on let's go ahead and hit Y just turn overlay on but now I want to make some adjustments to the graphic and I'm gonna select the clip and go to the control tree and go to the positioner now this time I'm gonna use cropping and I'm gonna go ahead and crop now if you just select crop and you left click and you drag it'll crop on all the axes at the same time and that's not what I want so I'm gonna hit control Z and get rid of that I'm gonna get to where the cursor says crop and I'm gonna hold down shift when I hold down shift it constrains it to one axis it allows me to just crop on that one axis and bring that down and now you can see that I've got it about the same height a little bit lower actually than the earth on my output now I also have a smoothing control and again if I just left click and drag it it's gonna smooth on all axes at the same time and that's not really the effect I'm looking for. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to pull down the smooth just on the top and this gives me a nice blend and now let's go ahead and take a look at that. That's looking pretty good, pretty happy with that and that's two layers going on right now. Let's go ahead and add a title now. We'll go to titles and we'll bring in a still title page down below. Let's go ahead and cut it to length here 
and let's zoom in on this area and let's go ahead and shave some of these things now that's actually pretty good we'll make this the same length as that that looks good and let's compose our title page here go to title I'm gonna pick my font come down here and when I start to compose my title we're gonna go ahead and call this the exploration festival so I'm gonna type out the word exploration and instead of grabbing the uh, selection tool and manually sizing it, I want you to notice that over here in the control tree, we now have uh, text exploration available. And I can open that up, and I have all of the attributes available for this text. And remember, anything with the little dot here next to it can be keyframed over time. So this allows you to do a lot of different text effects. First of all, I'm just going to go to size here, and I'm going to size up my text and uh, that looks pretty good right there and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the text and grab it now and move it into position where I want it to be that looks pretty good let's go ahead and finish typing we'll go back to the text tool now and make sure we're in, on the end of it so we've got the exploration festival graphic now and again We'll go ahead and uh, let's go to color and give that a nice gradient. Type will become linear. Choose the gradient that we want to use and then go ahead and rotate that gradient into position. Now let's animate the different layers of the graphic. We can animate all three layers coming in actually. So let's start out with the earth. I'm going to come over to the earth layer here and go to the positioning panel and again I'm gonna go ahead and start out with Q just to get me to the first frame and I'm gonna move in a little bit and create a keyframe there with an ease in and then go back to Q and I'm gonna hold down shift and move the earth off screen Now this will give me a nice quick slide in from the left of the earth coming to position that looks great let's do the same thing with our uh, gradient from the bottom I'm going to hit Q, and I'm going to come in a little bit. Now, this one's offset a little bit in time here, so it's going to come in and happen a little bit faster, which is what I want, actually. So let's go ahead and create a keyframe for it there uh, with an ease in, and then we'll hit Q, and we're going to go ahead to where this says move, hold the shift, and drag it straight down to where it's off the screen. So now if we play the project from the beginning, We've got our two quick moves, and our text is just popping onto the screen. We haven't uh, animated the text yet, but we can do that. Now remember, we do have a lot of control over the text here, which is also keyframable. And you can open up all of these controls, size, position, rotation, italic, and you even have controls for things like tracking that can change the sizing of the letters, or the spacing between the letters. So a lot of control in here, and again, all of it can be uh, keyframed over time by using the little dots on the side. I'm just going to go ahead and keyframe this as a uh, image using the positioner. So again, I've got it selected. I'm in the positioning window. Let's go ahead and drag in a little bit in time, create our keyframe, do our ease in, hit Q, and let's drag this one uh, off to the right. So now all three elements come in from different sides. If I wanted to come here, go to splines, and again I want to make sure that I have 3D position open and I have X, Y, and Z turned on, turn alpha channel off here. Now the same sorts of controls that work for the timeline down here as far as zooming and panning work up here inside your spline area as well. So I can manipulate the spline area by putting the cursor up in the timeline area or the time code area and then right click pushing forward and pulling back zooms and left and right allow you to pan so again uh, this is the motion that we currently have and if we think it's happening too fast I can go ahead and select these keyframes and hold down shift drag this out and now when you run the project you'll see that the earth comes in a little bit smoother yeah, I like that a lot better let's do the same thing to our uh, background graphic here. We'll just zoom in. We'll grab those second keyframes, hold down shift, and just go ahead and pull them out a little bit. And run the project. 
Well, it still looks like the text is coming in pretty quick, so another way to adjust a keyframe is let's go to the keyframe by clicking on go to previous keyframe. Again, I've got the title page selected. There's two keyframes. I can go previous again. That's the one at the beginning. And then I'll go back to the next keyframe here, and that's the one that I want to adjust. Well, I'm going to eliminate it. It's gone. Now I only have one keyframe at the very beginning where it's off screen. And I can just drag the timeline out further. Now hold down shift and drag the text back into position. I'm going to go ahead and add ease in. And let's run the project and see what we've got. Now let's go ahead and create some fade outs here for our graphic. We'll just grab our fade handles, we'll fade them down, and now our graphic will fade off the screen for us. Now this graphic is a, uh, a unit unto itself and I could use it in several different places. I don't have to use it over top of the balloon. So to do that we can select the entire group of clips that we use that comprise this graphic and we can say we want to make it into a sub-project. When we make it into a sub-project it now becomes one clip and it can be treated like one clip. And what's great is I'm going to go back to uh, my project folder here and I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it sub-projects. And let's go into that folder and I'm going to drag this sub-project into that folder and I get an instance of it. Now I can drag it back out but what's nice is now I can drag it back out over and over and over again and I have this graphic now which has its own alpha channel. I hit Y and now it's exactly where I wanted it to be but I can treat it as one clip. Now we do have the ability to rename this sub project so we can just right click on it say we want to edit the name and we can go ahead and call this something appropriate uh, we can call it exploration overlay that way I know what it is and I can use it in any project that I want to. And again, remember, if the name is longer than the icon here, we can always go down to details to see exactly the full name of whatever it is we're using. Uh, and this is now just like any other clip in your edit. It even has fade handles at the beginning and the end. And uh, you can set an in and an out point on it and treat it just like any other clip within the edit. If you ever need to get back into the sub-project to make changes to it, you can right-click on it. Say you want to go ahead and drill into the sub-project, and now you've got the sub-project here. And you can go ahead and make whatever changes you might want to make. Once those changes are made, you just come back up here. Now you're in sub-project, just go back to your actual project, and the changes that you made are saved into the sub-project from that point on. If you do make changes and you want to save them, you might want to go ahead and re-export uh, the sub-project out to your file bin with the new changes.